today's video, we're going over clinical examination of Pez and serene pain with the goose's foot of the knee. What's up guys, this is Dan Pope from fitnesspainfree.com. I'm a physical therapist and a coach. We help to make incredible coaches and clinicians. There are online courses, communities, mentoring programs. The goal of today's video is to make you 1% better. So Pez answering pain is kind of an odd diagnosis. It's, it's a little funky, it exists on kind of the front and the side of the knee. It doesn't behave like the other common forms of knee pain like patellofemoral pain. So in today's video, I wanna go over how we can accurately diagnose this to go ahead and have the best treatments for this condition. So Pez answering pain is most common in women over the age of 40. It's also common in patients that have knee osteoarthritis, particularly with valgus issues at the knee. It's also commonly associated with knee instability issues, so MCL insufficiency. And the Pez answering musculature, so the gracilis arterius and semitendinosus, all exist to help to reduce valgus forces at the knees. So if you think about field sports, so folks are doing a lot of cutting, pivoting, changing direction, a lot of valgus force that the knee has to be able to resist. So you may also commonly see this in your athletes that do field or core sports. Pardon the interruption, but I've got something you're definitely going to like. It's an evidence-based cheat sheet on Pez answering pain. All right, I know it's probably not that exciting, but because you don't care about it, you probably don't know that much about it. So I've done the work for you. This action-packed cheat sheet has everything you need to know about Pez answering anatomy, mechanisms of injury, prevalence, risk factors, pathophysiology, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, prognosis, and lastly, treatment. What are we gonna do about this problem? My promise to you is I'm gonna catch you up to date on Pez answering pain in under 10 minutes. This cheat sheet is 100% free. I'll leave a link in the show notes in the description. Go ahead and click on that and get to learning. Now, back to your video. All right, so next, a little bit of anatomy of Pez answering pain. So you have three muscles that come together into one tendon here. So you have your semitendinosus, so you kind of appreciate how this muscle comes through, attaches right through this area. You also have your sartorius, comes across, attaches right up through here, and the gracilis, which is kind of right up through the middle, all attaches right to this point. And one of the dead giveaways for folks that have Pez and serene pain is that they have this odd pain that's a little bit more anterior and a little bit more medial. It's not directly to the side of the joint like you would see with more meniscus pathology or osteoarthritis. And it's also a little bit more anterior, so that's a little bit funky as well. But if patients are saying the majority of their symptoms are right here with our goose foot, you see them in the background, that's a sign you have Pez and serene pain. And if you like this goose right here, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. In terms of specific special tasks we have for Pez answering pain, there really aren't any particular ones, but a lot of these patients will report they have pain going down the stairs. So it may be appropriate to try a step down task. Let's go ahead and do a little step down here, Steve. Yep, what you might notice is they have knee pain. We wanna make sure they're actually experiencing pain right in that same portion we talked about previously. Since the semitendinosus, hamstring, muscle is involved with folks that have Pez answering pain, you'll find some studies that suggest doing a hamstring length test to help you rule in Pez answering pain. So very simple, just take your patient's leg, flex to 90, and then we fully extend. We're looking for two things. A, is this provoking your normal symptoms? Yes. Oh, it could be Pez answering pain. And the other thing we can look at is, it there, is there a difference on the uninvolved side? So let's say you have a really good range of motion here, but you're very limited and have pain on the involved side, that might be a sign that you do have Pez answering pain. Steve definitely has some. You can also try some manual muscle testing, but keep in mind, this is more using critical reasoning to guess what might be provocative for these folks, help to rule in Pez answering pain. I don't have any like good sensitivities or specificities to try to back up what I'm talking about right now, right? So just like we stretched out the hamstring to see if that provokes symptoms, we can also stretch the adductors. I like to try to stretch the adductors with the legs straight, just to make sure that we're targeting the right adductors. Does that produce any of your pain? Oh gosh, yeah, it's very painful. Might truly have Pez answering pain. The other thing we can try is to come out into a stretch position. Now pull back to the center. Is that worse in your situation there? Okay, so that may roll in Pez Rean's pain a little bit further. And just as we did a manual muscle test for the adductors, we can also do it for the knee flexors for the hamstrings. So let's go up into, let's go full hip flexion. And then we'll extend the knee a little bit. Now push down into me. Go ahead, push, 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 push. Does this provoke your normal symptoms? A little bit. A little painful. Is your symptoms right, right through here? Oh, yeah. All right, maybe that Pez answering. <laughs> Next, we'll go over some differential diagnosis. So really easy way to tell where the Pez answering lies. It's just follow your hamstring from the bottom side as it comes across right through here. This is where your symptoms should be, right? 
Now other forms of medial knee pain you might see will be more uh, meniscus pathology, osteoarthritis, or MCL injuries. And generally speaking, if you have a traumatic injury to the MCL or the meniscus, usually your patient's gonna tell you, you know, see some swelling, they had a traumatic injury where they're cutting, pivoting, changing direction, right? But sometimes you have osteoarthritis, or more of a degenerative uh, meniscus tear within the knee, it behaves a bit like pes and serene pain. So what can we do to differentiate the two? So one is going to be the location of your symptoms and joint line tenderness. So for pes and serene pain, again, come through here, pain's right in this region, right? Which is a little bit odd. If someone has more meniscus pathology or osteoarthritis, I go right in the joint line, I should palpate there, and your symptoms might be coming from this region a little bit more so, as opposed to a little bit lower down. The other thing we can do is some passive range of motion. So if I go passively into extension here, that shouldn't hurt for pes and serene pain. And if I go into full knee flexion here, that shouldn't hurt for pes and serene pain, but it might be painful for folks who have meniscus pathology. The other thing you might see, is a MCL injury. And again, the subjective is important. So if your patient was cutting, pivoting, and they ended up popping or stretching the inside of their leg, maybe more related to the MCL, right? But you can also try some valgus testing. So go ahead and relax that leg here, Steve. Now I'll give a valgus force. Does that reproduce any of your symptoms? So if you have an MCL injury, probably doesn't feel great. But if you're dealing with pes and serene pain, it's gonna feel a-okay, right? One of the last things that might be going on is you might be dealing with some sort of tendinosis or tendinopathy of the hamstring or adductor tendons, right? And what happens is that these behave very similarly. One of my thoughts is that when I've seen athletes in the past that had pes answering pain, they might have been dealing with, let's say, a semi-tendinosis, tendinosis, right? That sounded like it was gonna be completely wrong, but I think that's actually accurate. Or maybe that's the same thing that's occurring as the adductors as well. So in order to try to test and see if those are, uh, involved, we can go into end range adduction and then go ahead and push into me and strength test. Does that produce your symptoms? Right? You do the same thing with the hamstring, come all the way up and then push down into me and relax. I think the problem with these tests is that if they're positive, that doesn't necessarily make me believe it's more pes and serene or more of a tendinopathy, but at least for us, the way I tend to treat both of them is very similarly. So when folks do have this pain problem, is it pes and serene? Is it one of the other tendons? Right? It's kind of hard to tell. Yep. And in the day, they're all treated similarly. All right, so now you have a good idea of how to diagnose pes and serene pain. You might not know about pain on the other side of the joint or IT band pain. Well, I've got a link for you. Leave a link in the corner. Go ahead and click on that. And in that video, I'll go over clinical examination for IT band pain.